Hello and welcome to another episode of Tepo Republic. On the last episode, we saw the Sioux forces capturing Mino Castle from the Nagoya clan, destroying them using our artillery advantage. And then immediately after that, we pressed them to their final settlement in Owari, destroying their army, then laying siege to the castle, but the enemy sallied out. So we now faced a sally defense against an enemy that had big missile superiority. However, the extreme stormy conditions on the day of the battle meant that their missile units were all but useless and I exploited my cavalry and melee units to completely annihilate the Nagoya forces. As a result, it was quite easy for us to capture the castle afterwards, so Uari was ours, and now the Emperor is finally taking note of our progress and has promoted us to the Imperial Court. Then there was a period of consolidation, but when the Nagoka clan captured South Shinano and then declared war on us, I had to prepare for conflict once again, getting Takeyuki's army together in Mino. But then to make things worse, the Obama, our former enemy, declared war on us again. I called in a bunch of my allies. Luckily, the majority of them stood by my side, but one critical ally, the Yodo clan, who controlled Kyoto, decided to leave our alliance. So the first move in the war was to investigate South Shinano. I saw that Nog the Nogoka clan were in trouble there, so I'm deciding to bide my time and see if I get a chance to steal the province from them. Meanwhile, I'm building up a new army in Umi province to defend against any Obama incursions. Now let's continue. Some of Takehisa's men even recognized me from my little coming-of-age tour in our lands. Only a few seemed surprised to see me, though I expect the rest of them concealed their shock. If they knew me, they knew I was not exactly general material. <laughs> but the people of Iga have spoken. Lord Takeyuki must retain the support of the people, and if that means giving them the choice of Iga's petty princes to promote, then so be it. I won't complain, unless I get myself killed. The men you sent as my guards should suffice, though. They've even taught me a few things. Takehisa, my commander, has taught me a thing or two as well. Things like how we should not trust his father's motivations in this war, and how the use of Western weapons is not becoming of a true samurai. It seems that somewhere along the way he strayed from the usual Todo family path. It makes me uncomfortable to hear him say these things in front of the men, but I cannot intervene. He is a traditional enough man that he might just execute those who disobey him. Anyway, all is quiet in the camp, no word of enemy movements. Takahisa has been ordered to stay put until new men from Mawari Fifa arrive. If I keep my head low, hopefully he won't take his anger out on me. Hello and welcome back to Tepo Republic. Here's the situation on the border between Mino and South Shinano. It looks like my enemies, the Nogoka, are in trouble. So I'm going to end the turn and see what happens. You can see that, as I said during the last time sequence, I've stationed forces nearby so that if I can take advantage of enemy weakness, uh, they'll be in a good position. And it looks like I am going to get a chance there because the Nogoka have moved forces away from the castle. I think they defeated their enemies and perhaps chased them with their remaining forces, meaning the castle itself is in big trouble. Some of the remaining forces who were fighting them actually reinforced me during this battle, so I have an even bigger advantage than I would have normally. The gates of the castle are open. I think it was still damaged from the fighting, so it's an easy order to resolve capture for Takeyuki's newly modernized army. South Shinano is ours, a strange place to capture. It's now very out on a limb uh, compared to our home provinces. Perhaps a little bit hard to defend. We'll see how that goes. Takeyuki has been given the trait of brave for his part in that battle, so that's good news. To the north, we have a neutral clan who's currently beset by rebels. To the south, an enemy clan, the Kakigawa, these guys were allies of the Nagoya clan who we were fighting over Mina and Owari and they're still at war with us as a result of that so we haven't engaged with them yet but it looks like I they have an opportunity to attack us words. now. So for the rest of my neighbours I'm trying this to arrange trade deals and generally improving relations but the Kakigawa are beyond repair, they refuse peace and indeed during the next end turn sequence they send a massive army marching towards South Shinano so it intends uh, looks like they intend to attack us almost straight away, so it looks like our newly captured Salfignano is going to be tested. 
Meanwhile, over in Umi, the threat of an Obama invasion still remains, but I've got Takahisa in an ambush position on the road between Umi and the provinces owned by the Obama, like Wakasa and Echizen. So if they do attack right now, I think I'm in an okay position, but unfortunately Takahisa's army isn't very strong. Now I was considering whether I should sally out of South Shinano and attack the Kakigawa army before they arrived. Public order would almost allow me to do it, but I decided to hang around anyway. Now the Nagoka removed their naval blockade of my trade fleets and I thought they might be going towards Key, where I'm building up a new fleet. They want to destroy my fledgling fleet before it can get big enough to threaten them. So I was keeping this in mind, quite a uh, stern threat considering I spent a lot of money building up the small fleet I have at the moment. So now the Kakigawa are on the offensive, they destroy some of my farmlands and then they go on to attack the castle at South Shinano itself. Let's have a look at their army. They've got a whole bunch of Shogunate loyalists and levy infantry. Two units that I'm not particularly worried about because from the inside of the castle, my line infantry is going to have a good advantage fighting with those ranged units. What I do need to worry about are those Ronin units and the Samurai. If they can get close enough and inside the castle, they'll annihilate my melee units. So I need to be careful, try and keep them away if I can, and exploit my artillery advantage. So here's the castle itself. The enemy is approaching entirely from the west side. So right away I can deploy all my men onto the west side. Here we see Carbine Infantry, a very glitchy unit which we'll see in a moment. This is probably going to be one of the few battles in this campaign that I use Carbine Infantry for reasons you'll see in a moment. The enemy are leading with their melee units and this is fantastic news for me because it means the enemy's melee units are going to be the first to go as they come in because those are the guys I'm most worried about. I'm quite happy with this arrangement. See here they're leading with some of their traditional units in a more southern group of their army which is led by their generals. Uh, most of their actual firepower isn't in their northern group. So outside the castle or at least in the outer tier I've put some melee units to receive the enemy. On the wall above them I'm getting sharpshooters, line infantry and mortars ready to unleash a hail of fire on the enemy once they try and get in the castle. I've got ninjas and cavalry held in reserve there as well. I've also got some more reserve gunners in case some of my men start dying on the walls. I can replace them with more missile units and Takayuki himself is overseeing this part of the battlefield. So for this initial part of the battle, these mortars are going to be the only unit that can engage with the enemy. So I decided to fire off a few rounds into these big bunched enemy forces. You can see I got one hit there that does devastating damage. I think I defeated around 30 enemies with a single shell. A lot of these guys are getting back up, but their morale is going to be very shaken. Those are only levy units. They are not going to be happy about that absolutely devastating artillery hit. Meanwhile on the north side, attacking the enemy's north group are my fire rockets, a garrison unit who have good long range and then fire down from on top of the castle. Unfortunately the trees block loads of the shots for the first volley so the enemy didn't take much damage. Here are the guys firing the fire rockets and they need to reload and get another shot off. They don't have the same range as the mortars but because they're so high up their range is being massively extended so even though they can barely see the people they're firing at they are able to fire. So once they've reloaded, we're going to give another volley to the enemy. This time they're not in the trees, so they're going to take the full force of it. And you can see I've got loads of hits on the enemy ranks. The explosives aren't that powerful, so it's not going to do massive damage, but their morale is definitely going to be hurt. The air sang as both shot and bullets launched the men on either side of me. Above us, smoky trails roared as rockets soared into the ranks behind us. It was nothing like we prepared for, nothing like we had expected, and certainly nothing like we'd ever seen. The boss pointed forwards and demanded that we act like men and teach the Sioux cowards a lesson about how a fight should be conducted. He was struck down in the next volley, just as we reached the foot of their walls and began to appreciate their true height. Another salvo of rockets tore us up. We didn't wait around to see who would be next. So here are the somewhat glitchy carbine infantry and as you can hear the glitch is that their weapons make the sound of cannons. It's actually not the weapons themselves, it's the unit. I have extensively tried changing their weapons to uh, fix that glitch. Unfortunately Sir, it can't be fixed, even the usual uh, fix for glitches of this type in Shogun Total War 2, something called a Symphonic Assembly, doesn't work in this case. So unfortunately uh, that unit is going to pretty much be discontinued. I've modded the game so the AI can't recruit it anymore and I myself won't be recruiting it. I will be using it in one more time in this episode because I had already done a battle with them. But from now on, you probably won't see much of the Carbine Infantry, which is okay because they're just a generic line infantry clone anyway. 
So you can see the enemy's main body of troops has advanced pretty deep into the castle, taking extreme losses. And once they get pretty deep, they decide it's actually time to go back. And they're going to take even more losses trying to get out of the castle. So far, no one has reached my melee line. Here I've got the sharpshooters and line infantry who are going to be sniping down the enemy as they run in. Particularly the sharpshooters who have good accuracy and very long range. At the same time, more fire rockets are firing down across this open tier, destroying enemy morale and troops. So, over time, the enemy realized that their frontal assault on my fortified bit of the castle wasn't going to work, and they're getting out of there with more mortars and fire rockets chasing them all the way. You can see over here there are big swathes of enemy troops just retreating from the castle battle entirely. The balance bar is starting to shift heavily in my favor. You could even see I had prepared cavalry outside the castle to go around and attack the enemy's rear but I realized that wasn't going to be necessary because the enemy were just being destroyed against my regular defenses. So after a short time after the enemy general routed the rest of the enemy's army ran off the field the battle replay tells me it's actually a close defeat I think the replay must have had a slight corruption at the end there and missed out the final minute of the battle or so because some of the enemy was still in the process of routing. But anyway, once we get back to the strategy map, we'll see the true result of that absolutely excellent siege defense where we've actually really proven the potency of missile weapons in the defense of uh, a, a castle because the enemy's melee advantage did them no good. We lost 55 men. Half of those were friendly fire because the fire rockets were so inaccurate. The enemy lost thousands of troops, killing only 20 or so of my men. We can see here that those glitchy carbine infantry actually got the most kills, although most of those were in the route phase because they chased down lots of units. The sharpshooters getting lots of kills as well. The Yadi Kachi they said they got 400 kills but actually they didn't engage anyone at all so I think all of those kills were in the route phase uh, the mortars and uh, artillery generally a bit lower than I expected the line infantry on the walls did better than I expected uh, so overall a very interesting battle we've seen the pure power of gunpowder units and on a strategic level we've defended South Chinalu perfectly so perfectly in fact that I can now take this army and counter-attack the Kakigawa provinces right away while they're still weak because I'm sure they'll build up another army and attack if I don't. So Takuyuki is moving out taking as many forces as he can and a ninja to start heading down towards the Kakigawa lands. It's going to take him a couple of turns to get towards their stronghold but on the way he may be able to defeat some more enemy forces. I'm also linking up some new men from Owari into his army. Now some of the troops I'm recruiting in Owari are started diverting over to join Takahisa's army because his army needs to modernize fast. He has lots of old traditional troops who won't do very well. You can see I'm recruiting another unit of carbine infantry there but we won't be seeing that again in the future. So here's that fleet I'm starting to construct. It only has two boats at the moment. It actually has uh, just two small corvettes who will not be a match at all for what I know the Nagoka have coming around the peninsula there. So I decided to run away. I'm going to run to the west because in general, western waters are controlled by imperial forces. So I thought I'd be okay. Now here's the problem. There's an Obama fleet blocking the strait between Shikoku and Honshu here, which means my fleet is now trapped. It accidentally goes into their zone of control, which saps all of their movement points. So now I'm at the enemy's mercy. The Obama can simply attack me with a superior fleet. And of course they do. So let's have a look. The balance bar says that the sides are equal. However, looking at the actual units, I assessed it to be not true. The enemy has two 14-gun corvettes. I have two 6-gun corvettes. The only reason the balance bar is in my favor is because I have more crewmen, but those crew are going to be useless when their ships sink. The enemy also had a gunboat, but gunboats are extremely weak in combat, so I'm not too worried about that. I try to run away, and the Obama are chasing me down. So what I actually should have done in this situation was auto-resolve the battle because there was a much greater chance of winning by auto-resolve than by actually fighting it myself, which is a quite rare situation. However, because it wasn't too important and because I wanted to show you guys a naval battle in this campaign, I decided to see how this would go by fighting it out myself. We are ready so to here defend, we are sir. on the waters just south of Honshu. The Obama are closing in. Here are my ships. You can see they're very big with a couple of cannons, three down each side and a massive amount of crew concentrated at the front, gunmen and melee units. The same thing for the second ship. They are identical. The enemy are coming right at me with their gunboat. Meanwhile, their two corvettes have turned to start firing already. They slightly outrange me and you can see they have seven guns on each broadside. 
so they're going to be firing at me with 14 guns in total. I can only amass 6 guns worth of fire, and I'm going to have to get closer to them before I can actually do it. So I'm already taking damage. You can see the uh, wheelhouse on the ship's engine there is already starting to fall apart, even after a few seconds of fighting. I'm getting a few shots off. I think I'm actually currently firing at their gunboat because that's the only unit in range. But their gunboat's so small that at this big range, it's almost impossible to hit it. Although if I do hit it, it'll do devastating damage to such a small craft. So, a long-range artillery battle commences that I am doomed to fail. Unfortunately, I couldn't think of any way to not make this be the case because these units aren't allowed to do boarding actions, which was my hope that I could get in close to the enemy's unit and try and board them, but uh, unfortunately these corvettes don't have that ability. So what I decided to do, perhaps as some consolation, was to gang up on the enemy's gunboat, which the two enemy corvettes left on its own right in the middle of the map. So I'm closing in fast with my two corvettes. Uh, the enemy gunboat only has three guns, one on each side and one on the front, so it's not going to be retaliating too much, and I'm going to do what I can to take it out. I only have to get a few direct shots to at least demoralize them and make them rout, because they only have a small crew. I've already killed a few of them. I'm probably not going to be able to sink it, because my solid shots uh, take a lot of hits on the boat to actually sink it. So in this case, I'm focusing on taking out the crew. I've got my guys on uh, fast reload mode. This means they're going to fire more shots per second, only slightly more though. The enemy are gunning as fast as they can to uh, come right across my broadside. Unfortunately, my reload cycle was slightly out of sync, so they went right in front of uh, where it would have been perfect for me to fire just as I was starting to reload. So unfortunately, I missed some really good shots. But they are now getting quite close to my second Corvette here. They're returning fire, but my Corvette is able to get a couple of hits at this close range. The enemy's crew has been quite damaged. They took heavy casualties by the last shot. Another shot hits their rear, and they start routing. And they're not going to come back from routing. So we've successfully defeated this enemy gunboat. A small consolation, because the whole time we were doing that, we were taking fire from the enemy's Corvettes. And you can see my trailing ship here is actually in big trouble. It's taken a lot of damage. Both sides of the ship are falling off. It's taking severe hull damage, which means it's actually beginning to sink. Sir, you can see the guys on the ship are attempting to repair the ship. This is something you can do, is when the ship starts sinking, you can try and repair it, and this restores some of the health of your hull. Uh, but it means the guys can't fire properly or fight. So it's a bit risky, but because I'm so far away from the enemy, I thought it's okay to do it for now. So as the ship begins to list and my guys frantically repair, all under fire, quite frankly, hoping this battle is beginning to fade. Sir, so, a telegraph from Harima. Captain Endo's ships have been seen steaming eastward with three Obama corvettes in pursuit. We believe our ships will not be able to outrun them nor outgun if our current intelligence on the Obama naval forces is correct. They may intend to close in on the shipyards at Koachi with aid from the Nagoka. It is hard to say it, but I think we must consider Endo's men and materials to be lost to us, sir. But that does not mean we should not avenge him. I've already sent our contacts to arrange western shipwrights to visit. With your permission, we shall build ships to outclass and crush them. Now, as you can see, my attempts to repair this ship were futile. The enemy kept hitting it whilst I was repairing it, and unfortunately, it listed too heavily and begun to sank. The crew abandoned it. This was the ship of my uh, captain in this fight, which is going to reduce the morale of my remaining ship as well. All of those crewmen are lost, and now I have just a single damaged six-gun corvette to fight with two enemy 14-gun corvettes, and I think I've probably lost one or two of my guns on this corvette already. So the situation is not good. Unfortunately, I can't order my men to withdraw because this army has no movement points, so they have to fight it out with the enemy ships. Let's see if I've done any damage to them at all. This leading ship looks pretty pristine. Lost a couple of crew members. The ship behind has taken a little bit of damage, but still, really neither ship on the enemy side has taken any substantial damage from my shots. So overall, nothing to report against those enemy corvettes. A decisive defeat is declared as my ship finally routes after taking even more damage. You can see it's lost some of its masts and it's been completely beaten up. Most of the crew survived, but the ship itself is going to be useless to me now. So, a decisive defeat indeed. That was not good. And from the balance part in the beginning of the battle, you would have thought it would be a bit more balanced. But no, quite a crushing defeat in fact. 
So the survivors do actually manage to retreat uh, because they didn't die in the battle, but the Obama are going to quickly annihilate them. So there's going to be no respite for these men. This time the balance bar is a little bit more even. Uh, still though, I think it overestimated my chances even in that case. So my plan to build up some more ships and take revenge on the Nagoka has gone completely. The Nagoka fleet itself heads west so it doesn't come and attack my shipyards which is what I feared. So the potential for building ships is still there. Now let's focus on something that's going well, the campaign against the Kakigawa. Takuki's force moves down the road and now spots the enemy castle. They have a small standing army as well, but it's nothing we can't deal with. Now I notice that if I leave my artillery behind, I can attack the enemy city right away. I was wondering whether I should actually bother doing this, but I thought the Kakigawa can't really recruit that many troops in the upcoming end turn sequence, so I don't really need to be rushing it, and having this artillery will make any attack attacks on the castle I need to do much much easier so I'm going to wait around and also move up those reinforcements who are gradually trailing my army. So during the next end turn sequence the Kakigawa are garrisoning their city against attack and we have a difficult political situation here because the Toyama clan are attacking one of my allies to the east of Thalshinano. Now I didn't necessarily want to actually back up my ally here because the Toyama are quite powerful and they have armies on my unprotected northern border north of Mino and South Shinano. So I broke my alliance, I did the dishonourable thing unfortunately. So it's going to slightly damage uh, my public order across the whole domain but it's not going to be anything too bad for now. So now that the end turn sequence is over I've got my movement points back. I can go and lay siege to the Kakagawa capital. The balance bar is slightly in my favour, but I didn't really want to go into the assault again because I'm just not really in a position where I need to rush this attack. So I'm going to get my reinforcements together and simply keep the siege up. If the enemy attack me, that would be great because I don't want to have to attack their castle walls. They do have a number of missile units that would make my life quite difficult going into the assault. So we'll just leave it like that. So now in the next end turn sequence, the Yodo at Kyoto are moving west and in fact they attack my ally there, the Takasuki. This is quite the problem because both of those allies are really useful to me. I want to keep both of these clans in my good books and now I'm being forced to make a choice. However, the other thing to consider is that the Yodo are actually one of my natural enemies. If I can take Kyoto from then, I'll be in a much better position politically and militarily in terms of receiving invasions from a westward direction because it happens to be in a superb position with regard to the rivers around it to uh, sally out and do defensives against western invasions. So with these things in mind I decided to join the war against Yodo. Very dangerous, luckily my forces in Umi haven't departed yet so I am going to be able to take part in the war. Now the Kakigawa, as I had hoped, decided to sally out. This was not a particularly good decision from them because I obviously wasn't going to reinforce this army in the near future but still I guess they had no choice so let's see how it plays out. And now the Yodo do us insult too. Is there a single ally we have that won't go out of their way to betray us? How does this make us look to the rest of the land? They will assume we are somehow not deserving of loyalty. I told everyone this would happen a few months back but no one listened. I said that Father needed to stay in Ego and keep close with the Lords in Kyoto and Yamato as their shogunate leanings will be our undoing. And now it's really happening, he still continues his quest for glory, campaigning against an obscure enemy in the East, when enemy scouts already circle our homes. The day of the battle is quite misty, a slight problem for me since I have a missile centric force but still we'll do our best. You can see I've got my front line hidden in the mist, I've got a whole bunch of line infantry basically ready to receive the enemy. I've deployed in front of a small hill that I'm going to put my light cannons on to fire up over the line. I've got these melee units, they're currently deployed weirdly, I think that was a mistake, they're supposed to be behind the line. On the flanks I have these single ranks of sharpshooters with blocks of melee units behind them. This is a particular favourite tactic of mine to do on the flanks. 
On the far left there, I'm deploying cavalry, but I'm going to have to bring them back in in a second because the enemy uh, started hunting them down. On the far right, I've got ninjas marching through these foot uh, foothills, sorry, hoping to find an opportunity to come and take out the enemy from behind. Here are the enemy forces just coming into view. They need to get a bit closer because of the mist uh, before we can actually see them. Once we do, they're also coming into artillery range. So I start bombarding them with my light cannons. Now, these small guns aren't going to do very much, and at this maximum range, they're not going to be very accurate. But still, I might be able to chip away at their numbers. You can see they've got quite a few melee units that are leading the force here, right in the center of their formation. So it looks like they intend to put their melee units in first, which is good news for me, because I can unload on them with my missile units before they make contact with my line. Now, I did have to bring my cavalry back to the rear of my formation, because the enemy could only see my cavalry for a certain amount of time, which means they diverted their whole formation to attack my cav, and uh, I wanted them to attack my main position, so I had to draw them back to my main position using the cav. So now a little later, the enemy are getting closer, they're forming up for their main attack. They've also come into range of my mortars, who are now starting to break their formations and inflict casualties, but they are going to be able to make it most of the way, because they didn't decide to wait around like some previous opponents had. So they're doing the correct tactic to counter these mortars and charging right in. At the front, they're charging with their Ronin, the powerful melee units. So I'm going to unload on them with all my rifle troops. I need to try and kill as many as I can before they make contact with my line. Because once they're in, they'll just cut through my relatively poor melee infantry. Luckily for me, they don't appear to be putting much effort into this charge. They're kind of just jogging, even walking towards my line. My line unleashes a volley, which kills most of them. The second line unleashes another volley, killing almost all of them. Now, just a few survivors start running in. And once they actually get up to the line, they decide, nope, we're leaving. And so do the rest of the enemy's melee units at the same time. So he successfully avoided a frontal engagement on the line, just barely. So now they're going to start retreating, taking more fire. The general is charging in, and I think their general will, will retreat as well before he makes contact with the line. So overall, our line was not violated by the enemy's melee units. Which is excellent news, because in a gunfight, I think I'll win. I have the superior ranged units. We have the carbine infantry here on the flank, still firing their crazy cannon guns for now. They're engaging with Shogunate loyalists. I'm hoping they'll win out against them. Overall, the entire line was favorable situations like this, fighting against Levy and loyalist units with professional line infantry who just have a slight edge over them. You can also see I'm using a Neil fire formation, which allows me to have two ranks of men firing simultaneously. Normally in uh, Fall of the Samurai, you can't do this. It's a very late game ability, but in Dark Mod, all units can do it from the very beginning. So you can see the enemy centre has pretty much broken. I've attacked their right with my cavalry and have broken their right entirely. Their left has already routed uh, just due to taking lots of gunfire. And at this point, their centre is beginning to break as well. They have a couple of units protected by a ridge. So I had to rush up to that ridge to fire over it and take them down. So at this stage, it's pretty much a mass route. I'm doing a bit of pursuit by fire. I'm not pursuing them properly. Uh, just because the enemy has artillery, which I need to take out with my cavalry, so there's no point rushing my army forward to kill these stragglers whilst taking casualties myself. I can kill enough of them just firing like this. So, excellent news, the majority of the enemy has been defeated, and I sent a unit of cavalry to take out their wooden cannons at the back of the map. The replay actually froze, I thought it had corrupted itself for a second, but after a while it decided it was indeed a decisive victory. So it looks like the fate of the Kakagawa clan has been sealed and their lands will become ours. We'll see this and more next time on Tepo Republic. So that's all for this episode. See the Sue's campaign for Kyoto next time on Tepo Republic.